Good morning. In today's video, you will see what I do on a normal day. This is my morning routine and my daily schedule. I wake up at 5.05 a.m. To my alarm, that gradually gets louder so that I'm not rudely awakened. I like to wake up earlier than everyone else so that I can have time alone. I find that if I start running my shower before I turn off my alarm, there's more of a chance that I won't just turn off my alarm and crawl back into bed. I've also found that brushing my teeth right after I wake up gives me enough time to think about my day and how thankful I am to be who I am. On top of that, I fully realize that I'm awake. And all the excuses of going back to sleep disappear. After I take off my do-rag, I like to do a light retwist right before I hop in the shower so that my starter locks will be lifted off my scalp. I'm very minimal when it comes to my hair, so this is really all I do. Now if it's a wash day, then of course I'll just shampoo my hair and dry it. I don't do any conditioning, especially since I have starter locks. But if you want to see what I do to wash my hair, you can watch that video as well. I created one recently. I also want to mention that sometimes I'll wear a shower cap on days that I don't feel are necessary for washing. The moment I step into the shower, I begin my morning prayer. I prefer to take a longer shower because it's a time where I'm most vulnerable and I can hear God more clearly. Most of my greatest ideas came from these moments. I typically don't even begin washing until roughly five minutes in. There are only three products that I use straight out of the shower. These are staples and I use them every single day. When it comes to getting dressed, I keep the process as minimal as possible. I wear the same jeans every day, and I only choose a shirt at the right end of my closet. This allows me to eliminate decision making and make decisions on better things throughout my day. When I turn off the light in the bathroom, I have to take six large steps in the dark before I reach my bedroom door. Once I'm out of my room, I'll walk around the corner into my kitchen and turn on the light. I come to turn on my Keurig, and believe it or not, this is actually my eighth cup of coffee for this entire year. Last year, I used to drink at least two cups a day. I had my first cup of coffee this year on September 29th, and ever since, it takes me a whole week to finish one cup. I do that by warming up the cup every morning and allowing myself a few sips before the coffee gets cold. To have a little fun, I like to flip my K-Pod into the Keurig. I do this as long as the water is still warming up. If I go over that time, then I would just be wasting my time. But for the record, I've landed it every time so far. I wanna take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Bellway. The super fiber in Bellway can help you detox from all those holiday meals without making you run to the bathroom. I like to be real comfortable on the inside and the outside. And the good thing about Bellway is that it can relieve and prevent bloating, gas, indigestion, and other uncomfortable symptoms related to your gut. Bellway is an organic supplement that contains zero sugar. It's flavored with real fruit, so it tastes better than other fiber brands. And let me tell you, this tastes so good. And to top it off, Bellway is safe to drink every single day. They encourage you to only take half a scoop the first day, and then after that you take one to three scoops a day. And to take it, you simply mix it with water or blend it with your smoothie, and then you can drink it immediately. Bellway comes in tubes and stick packs, starting at $19.99, and it is available in the U.S. only. Make sure to use code GUNTHER25 to get 25% off your first order at Bellway. Now that it's a little after 6 a.m., I begin to do one of three things, depending on what day it is. On Tuesdays, I watch a weekly video from my mentor. On Wednesdays, I read and write and Thursdays I do homework. These are three key things to get my day started. I guess you can call this a building time. It's time for me to build myself up, not only for the day, but for life. So I would encourage you, find some things that'll help you in your morning routine that boost you and build you up. And as 7 a.m. rolls around, I begin to transition into my creation process. And this is the time that I use to create all the great ideas that I have. So whether that is filming, editing, or building, this is the best time for me. And one thing that my mentor told me is find the time that you work best and use that time to do your best work. And that's super crucial, because if I were to wait till later in the day to where I don't really feel like doing any work, or if I do it too early on in the day, I won't be producing the results that I want to. So it's good to find that sweet spot where you can do your best work. And when filming, I work no longer than 30 minutes. In this particular video, I'm showing you my Tuesday, which is my busiest day. So when filming, I work no longer than 30 minutes. And once I'm done creating, I send all my files to my editor to be produced and uploaded. Now, I used to edit all of my own videos. At one point, I was producing over 20 videos a week across the board between myself and clients. I've minimized my workload so that I can spend most of my time thinking and brainstorming. Speaking of brainstorming, I begin all of my thinking at 8.15 a.m. after having a light breakfast. This is the time where I come up with content, business ideas, and projects. This is one of my favorite parts of the day because I can be as creative as I want. I like to log all of my ideas and check on them every day so that I know my progress on everything. Some ideas I accomplish immediately, while others may even take up to a year to get there. No matter the size, I always write it down. 
and I always check on it. Now this might seem odd for a lot of you, but as my day comes to an end at 9 a.m., I get orders ready to be shipped out. Now since selling products is my youngest business that I started in July, I'm still doing most of the work, but really soon I will hire someone to run it for me. And yes, that's the end of my work day. All of my work in total is about an hour and a half. So once I finish up orders, my day is essentially done, and now I can relax and spend time with family. This is around the time Candace is done getting ready and both of my children are up. I like setting up my day like this because it allows me to be the businessman and the family man that I aspire to be. So guys, that is my morning routine and my daily schedule, and it really doesn't deviate from this much. And I will say that as the week progresses on to Wednesday all the way to Saturday, the week gets even slower, so I'm doing less work. Now I do want to briefly update you guys on what's been going on with my dreadlocks. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's been going on. All right guys, so let's take a look at my dreadlocks. It's been a month, I believe. Yeah, I believe it's been a month. So a lot has happened. Um, I've experienced quite a bit of growth, a lot of maturing as well, especially on the back and the sides. And I'll show you guys that uh, uh, as this video progresses. But I do want to take this moment to say thank you for tuning into this video and watching my morning routine. It was really cool making that that section of the video um, because a lot of people always ask me, you know, what do you do on the daily or what does your daily routine look like? And it's really very minimal. So I just wanted to get that out of the way and say thank you for tuning in and yeah. Thanks for sticking all the way to the end for the update. Like I said in the routine video, is I really don't do much. I really, I wear a do-rag at night, just to talk about what I've been doing off camera. I wear a do-rag at night, I'll wear a shower cap and I'm not washing my hair like I explained in the routine. I used to get my hair wet every single day, but that was before I got this really nice retwist. So I actually haven't washed my hair or even got my hair wet since the last retwist, which was last week and it's holding up really well. And the reason being is because it's holding so good and it's not stiff or anything, like it just it's just held up very well. Um, it doesn't feel very sticky or anything like that. That locking gel, or not even locking gel, but just that gel in general, the gel I used in that video just works tremendously and I would recommend it guys. Like after having it in for a week, I'm not, and I wouldn't even say that it's in but like yeah of course it's still in the hair but it's not hard like it was when it uh for when i first did the retwist but yeah those are the few things that i have been doing like i said the only difference was not washing my hair this week um i'll most likely wash it either next week and probably keep up that process of every two weeks and then doing a retwist every two weeks in the beginning stages and that's something to expect with starter locks especially with my hair type being a three um three c i like to believe that the back of my head is like a four a four a but then again, that's just me hyping myself up. But regardless of the hair type, I'm still maintaining it the same as if I were treating all my hair at 3C. But the hair on the back of the head, I'm gonna show you it really quickly. I'm gonna keep talking. But you can kind of see that these are just holding so well. If you could feel these, they're actually hardening up, which that is just a sign of maturity. And the tips are actually blunting off, which is a good sign of budding, which eventually turns into locks. So I can expect this to actually start to lock up within, I would say the, like, I would say the locking process will probably start within these next couple months. I would say the rule of dreadlocks to where it will eventually start to lock up is the two month mark. And that's just one uh, mark to look forward to. I would tell you to not give up on your dreadlocks until you reach that two month mark. And that time will kind of give you an idea that okay maybe i shouldn't give up on my dreadlocks and i should just keep them and uh, keep going after it it's getting kind of dark in here i'm gonna put a light really quick all right much better but i'm gonna show you really quick again just a quick 360 since i have this light on be able to see everything and like i said like the back i feel like is maturing really good right now so that's always a good sign but mostly in these update videos i just want to tell you what has really been changing you can obviously see a little bit of the changes just from looking at the hair not only the changes, but what I've been doing to maintain the hair, because starter locks are tough to maintain because they don't want to stay maintained. Your, that your hair always wants to revert back to its natural state, uh, whichever way it is. That's why it's always easier for people with um, the four type of hair to lock up their hair because their hair naturally just always wants to lock up, which everybody's hair going in the, that direction will lock up eventually. But like I said, for even the lower hair types, like ones or twos, or even where I'm at, like the threes, um, it takes a while for it to lock up. It just takes time. Let's see, you can see the top. Like my, my sections are still really good just because that gel is perfect. And like I give it a nine, I, I'd, I give it a 10 out of 10 as far as the product. I'll probably give it a nine out of 10. It's not supposed to flake whatsoever, but there were a few that flaked at the roots. 
but that's really it. It wasn't, it wasn't bad at all, but they feel good. They feel like they're maturing and that's really the goal. And it's just a process of being patient the entire time. People always ask me, how do I get my hair to lock up quicker? And of course you can go in with a crochet hook or interlocking tool to make it actually lock um, instantly. I mean, if you're going for a twisted with gel look, then just stay patient. And even if you do get instant locks, it's not gonna look 100% how you want it to all the time. And it might look 90%, it might look 99%. And there's just little details that you wanna fix. Just know that it's a, it's a process and it just takes time. So I wanna encourage everyone out there, just be patient because I mean, that's really all you can do. The The number one thing is if, if your hair's not how you want it to be, the number one thing you're gonna have is patience. So just be patient and let it work out its course and it will eventually get to where you want it to be. But I do want to mention really quickly that last week during the Black Friday sale, even the Cyber Monday sale as well, which I do have something coming out very like really, really, really soon as far as what's going on in greatlocks.com. So stay tuned for that. But there was a bunch of people that took advantage of the sale of even just joining the masterclass for only $25 at the time. If you joined the masterclass, make sure to send me updates because I get text messages all the time from people in the masterclass asking for help and so on and so forth. But I want to see your updated pictures and how everything is going as well. And also I would encourage you guys to join the Great Locks Masterclass if you want to take your locks or even just start locks and take them to the next level. But we're all in this together, guys. Guys, what's really cool is a lot of people who started the master class actually started their dreadlocks around the same time as me So we're all on the same page and a lot of people actually started theirs who watch my videos that are all on the same page as well So I want to see your guys' updated pictures So if you're on Instagram tag me in your stories or your posts and I definitely will see the progress in which your hair is making Like do a before and after picture so I can see it and I would like to share your guys' um, stories to other people as well It'd be cool so just tag me. But that's pretty much it guys. Like I said, I'm very minimal and I, I would encourage you guys to be minimal as well because if you're constantly trying to like manipulate your dreadlocks or manipulate your hair to get it to where, to where you want it to, of course you can do that. Like I said, with the crochet hook or interlocking tool, I said you can do that. Like those are a given. You can go ahead and use those tools. So guys, like I always say, even with my first set of locks, is just be patient, be 100% patient the entire time and your hair will eventually get the way that you want it to be. So just take your time, don't try to rush it, because if you're constantly trying to manipulate your hair, you're never gonna be pleased with it. So just let it develop on its own and you'll be actually impressed and very pleased with how your hair turns out when you let it kind of do its own thing for a little bit. And of course maintain it so that it's not unraveling out of dreadlocks, but don't do too much to where you get upset about it. If you do, if you are getting upset, it's typically because you're doing too much with your hair. So guys, comment down below how you think everything's looking. I'm actually really stoked because I'm gaining a lot of length and it's just really awesome to see. Also, I really hope you enjoyed today's style of video, which is very rare. It wasn't easy making this video. Um, it took a lot of strength, a lot of effort, and a lot of, uh, of time to actually create it. So make sure to leave positive comments down below and encouragement. And then also don't forget to use my discount code GUNTHER25 to get 25% off your first order at Bellway. And I do want to thank them for sponsoring today's video. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully you guys do have an amazing day. Matter of fact, have a great day. Peace and God bless.